Hi guys and welcome to today's video on Dot Plots and STEM Plots, part of the further maths course and yes you are here to find out everything there is to know about Dot Plots and STEM Plots including how to create and read Dot Plots and STEM Plots and obviously how to create STEM Plots which you may have heard of in a previous existence as STEM and Leaf Plots as well or STEM and Leaf Diagrams. So many different names but we know who to blame for that. Oh yes, Barry. Back to Barry in a moment. But I'm not Barry, I am Darren, I am Maths Guru, and I'm here hopefully providing you that all-important understanding for this Further Maths course. It's really good to have you along. Thank you very much. Now, if you are new, can you do me a favor? And over there is a button that says click to subscribe. It's pointing to something in the corner if you are on YouTube, and I would be grateful if you could. It is literally just me. I'm a very small person doing a very big job trying to record all of these videos for 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 here in Australia and the world. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now obviously dot plots and stem plots might not necessarily be new, but they are building on the work we've already done here in Further Maths. You've missed a lot. We've already done one whole chapter's worth of work and what has that been covering? Well as I say here in the recap, which is all important, categorical and numerical data. We have looked at bar charts, segmented bar charts, histograms and frequency tables. We've even looked at some of the ways we can start to describe data. And actually, this is probably what this chapter is about the most. What other things can we use to describe data? Or data, depending on where you are in the world. So we've looked at shape and outliers, things like symmetrical, positively skewed, negatively skewed. We've looked at what outliers are. We've looked at center and how to find that sort of median value. And the idea of spread, both Nutella and Vegemite, rather too much information. Now, obviously, while all that stuff is there, there's obviously more data we can use to describe. Sometimes describing something as symmetrical is great. We know the general shape of the diagram, but it doesn't give us all that information. Telling us where the median is, that's great, but could there be more information that actually gives us more data? And actually, yes, there is. And we call this stuff in maths summary statistics, which is a term for those important things. Now, summary statistics you've probably met in year 10, you may have met them in year nine, and they're called measures of center and measures of spread. Okay, so there are different ways of talking about the center of data, not just medium, there are other ways, and also measures of spread, not just range. Range is actually a little bit of a dodgy one to use. Great to teach year seven and year eight, not necessarily great for you guys when you're a little bit more advanced and intelligent. Now, we've already met the idea of a histogram, and we know that a histogram talks about numerical data. The problem is that when we use those intervals, we actually lose our original data. We can't actually see anything. I mean, for example, this column shown here. We know that all of the people in there scored somewhere between 50 and 59.9999999 marks. Remember, they can't score 60. You cannot have an overlap. So they may have scored between 50 and 50.99999 marks, or 50 and 59 marks, depending on how it's marked. We know that eight people scored, but we just don't know, did they all score 50? Did they all score 59? Did some of them score? And that's the disadvantage with histograms. We lose that data. And so, well, life is actually great because there are other ways of retaining that data and still giving us some sort of information. Now, a word of warning. Dot plots, which we're gonna go on to in just a moment, are fabulous, but they are only useful for small data sets. Sadly, if we were doing things like ages, once again, bad example or good example, because if we were to ask people's ages that went between one and 100 or zero and 100, we would end up with a fairly massive dot plot. I don't even think that line I've just drawn there would even fit in the numbers zero to 100, unless it's really, really small. So we need to be careful about which data we actually use for our dot plots. They're great for small numbers of data. And it just so happens, I have an example here from the Cambridge Further Textbook series, which thank you Cambridge for allowing me to use your examples. Much respect, greatly, greatly appreciated. You have a, a, an awesome textbook. Now a dot plot can be drawn by hand. Some CAS calculators do it. To be honest with you, I can't work out how to get the Casio Classpad to do it. I think the TI Inspire does, but don't hold me to that. If you do know how to do it, leave a comment below, and I promise you I will do an addition to this video to show people. But to be honest with you, the amount of time it's gonna take you to actually create it on a calculator, you can probably draw it quickly anyway. So we have the ages in years of 13 members of a cricket team. 
And what do we notice here? We've got, what is my lowest number? It seems to be 18. What is my highest number? It seems to be 29. And so what I'm gonna do is draw a straight line because we need a scale. And I'm gonna say, what did I say the lowest? 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29. And I think it's time for a cup of tea. Thanks very much. Mm. Chinese tea, fabulous, very good for the digestion and apparently losing weight. Whole new discussion. Now, obviously, when I do a scale, I have to label that scale. We know that it's age in years, so age in years. I'm going to write that now so I don't forget. And what do I do? How do I draw a dot plot? Well, literally, Everywhere I see an age, I'm gonna do a dot. So 22, do a dot, cross it through. 19, do a dot, cross it through. 18, do a dot, cross it through. 19, do a dot, cross it through. 23, do a dot, cross it through. 25, do a dot, cross it through. 22, another dot, my dots are getting worse. It would be all right if I could actually see them. 29, done a dot. See, it's not exactly brain numbing, is it? Or rather, it's not exactly brain stimulating, is it? I can't do this, I'm a man, I can't talk and do dots at the same time on 22. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, one dot plot. Not complicated. I know, I know, I know, sorry, sorry, sorry. But now looking at this, we actually have a shape of a distribution. We can start to see where my data's bunched around. If I wanted to, I could find the median number. All sorts of things I can do on dot plots. But actually I'm gonna move on because stem plots are the next part of this lesson. We don't wanna to spend too long doing dot plots because we will all be asleep. But stem plots are awesome, I love these. Now if you look here, we have a tree. And what does a tree have? It has branches, and coming off the branches are in fact leaves. Well if we think of our branches as stems as well, we have the stems and the leaves, we can describe numbers, a list of numbers in terms of stem and leaves. Now the best way to do one of these is actually to create them. Then you guys go, yes, I remember doing this previously. And more importantly, you'll turn around and go, ah, oh, yeah, 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 actually, yo, I get that, I understand. So we have taken another example from the Cambridge Further Textbook. And we got university participation rates in uh, percent in 23 countries given below. 23, that's a lot of data. Display the data in the form of a stem plot. Now again, stem and leaf, stem plot, same thing. Barry, confusing thing once again. Now what we need to realize is that each number 26 and 12 and 20 and 36, and I'm choosing the two digit ones at the moment, have both a stem and a leaf. The last number of every single number here, the last digit of every single number there is in fact the leaf. All the numbers beforehand are called my stems. So what is my lowest number? One, what is my highest number? It seems to be 55, we'll take a punt on that. So what I'm now gonna do is draw a vertical line and I'm gonna put the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Why? Because actually what that's now standing for is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and zero tens. I'm gonna take my first number 26 and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a six here. Can you see? 20 and six, three, is actually zero, three, all right? So if we're gonna write every number as a two digit number, then three would be zero, three. 12, I'm gonna put a two here by the one, one and two, 12. 20 would have a zero, 36, put a six, one goes one, 25 goes 25. I'm gonna carry on doing this and then fade and come back. And there we go, there is my unordered stem plot. Now, the reason it's unordered is basically, well, I suppose fairly obviously, because none of my numbers are ordered. Yes, they're all just written in uh, rows, but the numbers are all over the place. Now, sadly, there's one very important piece of information missing, and a stem plot must always have a key. All right, so the key is just an indication of what the numbers are standing for. So for example, I'd write key 20 line six equals 26. Now in this situation, because it's age in, oh, so because it's percentages, then the chances are I may write 26% to give an indication. And you're gonna say, well, why do I need to do that? Surely we just know. Well, decimal numbers can be used on stem and leaf diagrams or stem plots as well. And strangely, if I had the number 2.6, guess how that's represented? Yes, a two and a six, which looks similar 
to the way we present 26. So it's very, very important that we write a key so that the audience know the very big difference between are we dealing with 2.6 or are we dealing with 26? Now that's an unordered stem plot. How do you think I create an ordered stem plot? Well, I take my unordered stem plot and I absolutely order it. Now I'm gonna make my screen slightly smaller so I can fit this in. And so drawing a line, I have the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. My apologies about my handwriting. And now I'm literally going to take all of those rows and order the numbers. So I've got a 1, a 1, a 3, a 3, a 7, an 8, and a 9. Moving it up so I've got a bit more room. I've got 1 is actually there already in order 2, 3, 5, and 7. Now, do you notice I'm putting the numbers in columns? That's going to become very, very important. So if we look at this 2, this one's fairly massive. 0, 1, 2, what else have we got? Uh, 5, 6, 6, 6, and 7. Then this one here would be uh, 3, would be 0, 6, and 7. Nothing in 4, and a 5 there. And ladies and gentlemen, my ordered stem plot, is that the end? No, it is not, because what am I missing? Once again, I must make sure I put the key. Now I can choose any number I like. If I wanted to, I could put nine line nine equals 99%. Doesn't matter, all good. Now a lot of people say to me, well, what happens with uh, numbers that have got three digits? Well, if I have, for example, 123, well, remember, I've already said that last digit is always the leaf. Everything beforehand is the stem. So looking at that, uh, now what those numbers stand for are actually 123, 126, 127, 134, 130, and one, yes. So again, just make sure that last digit is your leaf and the rest should be awesome. Now, the whole point of this is we wanna make it more pretty, don't we? Zooming a little bit, yes. Uh, we are trying to get an idea of sort of how the data looks or how the data looks and sometimes we have data that when we do a standard stem and leaf plot doesn't necessarily help us. So let's look at this value here. What's my smallest value? It's two. What's my highest value? It seems to be 17. So drawing this, I'd have zero, one, and that's it, zero and one. Now, do you already see what's gonna happen here? That's zero and one, so two is gonna be two, 12, 13, nine, 18, 17, seven, 16, 12, uh, 10, 16, 14, 11, 15, 16, 15, and 17. Okay, so automatically, that probably doesn't give us a huge amount of information. And if I go on and order it, uh, I'm not overly sure it's gonna make it any better. So we've got two, nine, and seven. No, nope, try that one again. Helps get them in numerical order. Masguru. So I'm gonna do this zero and one, just so I don't miss any. I've got a two and a two. Now notice how I'm crossing them off. Makes life a lot, lot easier. Three, anything else? No, a four, we've got one, four, one, two, fives, five and five. How many sixes? One, two, three sixes, six, 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 uh, seven and a seven and an eight. And I think that's fairly it done. Now obviously in all of these, I'd need to write key, one, two is equal to 12. And let's do the same key here, key. One line two, oops, is equal to 12. Now, because we've got this really long line of data, we can do something freaking awesome. We can actually split things into halves. Now, you're gonna turn around and say, huh? What I'm gonna do then is to try and make this clearer, let's zoom out a little bit. Uh, when we split it into halves, we actually draw a line and we draw true zeros and two ones because we're gonna put half of the numbers in by one of those ones, uh, sorry, by one of those zeros and half of them by the other zero. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna have the numbers zero, two, uh, four there, and five to nine there. Now what that means is, I'm gonna put the zero, oh, you know what that means. So when I got the one here, that's gonna be the numbers 10 to 14, and the numbers 15 to 19. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, there's five numbers there, and 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, there's five numbers there. So we've split them into halves. So now we'd have two, seven, nine, and then I'd have zero, one, two, two, three, and four there, and then five, five, six, 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 seven, seven, and eight. Yes? See what we've done there? Okay, so now that's given it a little bit more definition. We can see a little bit more of what it looks like, but 
why not go one further? Why not actually split it into fifths? And you're shouting at me saying, Maths Guru, you've forgotten your key. So zero hyphen two or zero line two is equal to two. So what about fifths? If I split it into fifths, how many repetitions do you think I'm gonna need? Well, hopefully five. So drawing a fairly massive line, one, two, three, four, five zeros, and one, two, three, four, five ones, moving it up a little bit so that we can see the data. So what this is now gonna mean is that's going to be zero to one. This is gonna be two to three, four and five, six and seven, eight and nine. This is gonna be 10 to 11, uh, 12 to 13, 14 to 15 is going to go in here, 16 to 17 is going to here, and 18 to 19 is going to go in there. Okay, awesome. See what happens? Now let's just take the data. So we've got a two is going to go in there. We had seven and nine, and then we had 10, 11, 12, and 13. We had 14, 15 twice. We had 16 three times, and 17, and we had an 80. Now, unfortunately, these don't quite match up, so let's make them match up with the ones that they will be by. And now we see the most beautiful shape. By splitting it into fifths, we've actually now got that shape there. And can you notice anything? Well, first things first, do we notice that we may have an outlier? Well, yes, this two value seems separated away from the rest of my data. How would you describe that data? Well, if we look at it, it seems to be, well, if we were to draw it that way around, we'd have this and that. And what do we notice? Because the data is more to the positive, it's negatively skewed. We would never have been able to tell that from the original data here, that, that it was negatively skewed. So sometimes, being able to do this to our data is really, really important. Well, the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that we are almost at the end of this because I'm gonna swap sides and I've swapped, and I'm gonna to start to grow bigger because that's the end of my lesson. Scrolling to the very, very top, this has been a Mass Guru production of Dot Plot and Stem Plot. If you haven't already done so, there is a doohickey over there loading for you to subscribe, and directly below it, there is a video for you to watch in the same course. It is awesome seeing you. Thank you so much for being around. Tell your friends, and if not, hopefully I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. Mass Guru, out.